Alex, first question. Do you think Tesla will become an energy bank, allowing people to save, store, and transfer energy either in miles woo, or kilowatt hours? That's a fascinating question. Ishan's clapping, so we'll go with you first and see what other people think. You know, uh, this is like using energy as a currency. And I think this, we nearly don't have enough time to get into the weeds of this. This is a fascinating, fascinating thing. I think this is something that's uh, almost already happening where you are like, you know, with, with Tesla energy and using your power wall to store, you know, energy and then transferring it when the grid needs it. There's a little bit of commerce already happening. I would just think about calling it a POC of a democratized or a decentralized energy economy. But really, uh, if you think about energy being another parallel currency to USD, right? Uh, and then we can get into talking about uh, moving into a barter system where, you know, your goods and services can be bartered for energy, for USD, for other goods and services and whatnot. And it's it's a completely, you know, it's such a, a deep rabbit hole. But then, yes, uh, absolutely, it can, it can. And I think first steps have already been taken. Gee, I wonder if there's a cryptocurrency where there's proof of work of using energy to uh, ensure that the uh, that the transactions are accurate. I wonder if that's a thing. Anybody else have any thoughts around this on the panel? That's another step into the rapid hole. Hans, Noah, I think it's fast. This is a fascinating question. Fascinating, fascinating question. I was going to say, I mean, this is. Who's going to go first? Go ahead. Everybody all at once, go. <laughs> It already is uh, happening in Australia, like in other places. So this is going to be the core thesis for Megapack, that it is exactly an energy bank that balances grids and supplies low-cost energy, regardless of when it's generated, to exactly the point that it's needed, at exactly the time that it's needed, in the exact correct form that it's needed, you know, because... There's all different types of power that is consumed, whether that be 120 volts, 240, 480, and then different phases of power for different types of industrial applications. So this is going to be something that, and that's, you know, one of the things that they talked about at the investor day was the ability of the Tesla mega pack to emulate any sort of generation asset in order to be able to balance the load on a grid like that is the definition of an energy bank. And that's just going to be one portion of Tesla's overall interaction with energy as they talked about. Yeah, I think that if you think of this from um, like a production standpoint, like you have um, supply and demand. So like the supply of energy, you're incentivizing people to produce more energy. And so as the amount goes up, Obviously, the demand can go up too, but I don't think it's going to go up as much as our energy production once we start using renewables in this way. So I, I don't know if the oversupply of energy is going to be profitable per se. So it's I think, generally speaking, in the future, the way energy is going to be charged is not necessarily for the amount of consumption, but just being on the grid or, or paying for the initial upfront cost of installing the equipment to do power, if that makes sense. Bob, and then uh, next question. Yeah, Noah is just brilliant. So along with his answer, I was going to say is yes. The answer was yes, but as the cost of energy goes down, then maybe it's not as valuable. Yeah, I think I think everything yeah, that fact, Tesla touches is deflationary. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Roger Starkey actually uh, brought up something that Tony Siba said about it, which is too too cheap to meter and less than the cost of transmission. Yeah, I think that. Says quite a lot. Yeah. Next question. And, oh no, question. Did you hear about the possible room temperature superconductors advancements at the All In podcast? Get Jordan on that. 99% cost reduction applies to batteries energy. Yeah, I just heard about it today. Uh, it's still experimental. They still need to figure out a lot of it. But if this becomes true, then uh, all bets are off. And I feel like Tesla would be at the forefront of that research. Any Any thoughts from the panel on this? I yeah, just... from the same podcast, it's nuclear fusion, right? Every time you think you are, you know, that much closer to something, it's just you've covered only 50% of the way, and it's like an infinite loop. And and from my kids, we're still a long way off. I mean, it's, it's a long way in the future to be practical. Yeah, I don't know about the specific 
um, breakthrough. But for me, I remember back in college from 2009 to 2012, I probably read 50 articles a week about battery technology because I was like super excited about the breakthrough and hub motors and electric cars like early in the early days um, and everything all of these promises kept coming and all these articles were there to, to, you know, spark my attention. Um, and 10, 12 years later, you know, we still haven't had a crazy breakthrough yet. So we, for all I know, this might be it, like it, but you know, there's been, you know, thousands of lab experiments and stuff to get us. So maybe they've broken that and they've got further along. I haven't done the research in it. It could be it, or it could be another one of those. Oh, it's promising a lot. We'll see. Hans. Yeah, if only there was a company that was really great at manufacturing things and also was a foremost industry leader in battery technology. I wonder who that would be. Yeah. Um, but on that note, the other thing is that prototypes are easy and production is hard. And so, you know, even if they're able to create a successful prototype on this, ramping this to the type of scale to where it'll have that 99% cost reduction across all the industries that it can possibly touch it's going to take a long time so exciting um but definitely like we're still in the way 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 early stages so it's easy to be on the enthusiasm part of that gartner hype cycle yeah agreed next one and billy community member thank you so much for your support do you think there will be an artificial price floor on used teslas at twenty five thousand dollars for the next five years because of the four thousand IRA credit for used EVs priced below twenty five thousand. What a fascinating question! So, so the way this works is uh, IRA tax credit gives you um, twenty five uh, four thousand dollars as long as your used EV is less than twenty five thousand dollars. And so the thought process here is that all used Teslas will be twenty five thousand to take advantage of that four thousand. How do you guys think about that? I think there's got to be a limit to how many times a car could be sold with that credit. So it's like if I sell it back and forth between my brother and myself. Once. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably once. And then the other thought would be not only does that help kind of create some sort of floor if it's if you haven't sold it before, but then there's the battery and the material of the batteries like that also kind of simulates a, a floor there as well. So, yeah, I think there's something. I don't know if it doesn't tra- if it's only one sell, then I don't I don't know how relevant that's going to be in the long term, though. I think the free market will bring it to a point where uh, it makes uh, you know uh, sense. People will hold on to the cars not for two years, but perhaps for five, seven, nine years, where it becomes something close to a twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand dollars. And then, yes, uh, it's not a price floor, I would say, but a price cap, more like. And then people will have to actually sell it for less than twenty-five because the dealer will have to make some money off of it. But that 4K might actually help uh, cover that cost. Now, the thing is, um, today people are buying Teslas for, you know, anywhere between 40 to 70, $80,000. So it's still a ways off before somebody would be willing to sell it at the low 20s number. So I don't think that's happening anytime soon, especially for the cars that have been sold in the last couple of years um, when the prices have been steadily rising. But yes, at some point with the new uh, lesser price Teslas entering the market and they'll be like three, four, five years old, maybe more, we'll start seeing a trend towards this number being like a cap as to what you might want to buy an old or used Tesla for. But I would, I might think, and this is again, pure speculation, that the IRS might step in and say, if you're not selling it at fair market value, then we're going to, if you're the seller, that's what we're going to charge you for fair market value. And they'll pick up the difference and then that will escalate the sale price because people aren't going to want to, at that point in time, there'll be no value. I don't think that exists as of now, but I wouldn't be surprised if they try to recapture the, the money that way. And so just to make sure I, I highlight this. So the IRA is will be the lesser of 4000 and 30% of the sales price of the vehicle, which cannot be more than $25,000, just to make sure I add that 30% of the sales vehicle as well. Oops. So yeah, we'll see. I I think, I still think there's going to be a, there's still going to be a certain cars. People are just going to want to pay more than 25 because it's just that much better. And 4,000 bucks is, is it's 20% roughly off the $25,000 car. But at some point, if you know, if you like, people are not going to press a a price a plat at $25,000, 
because it's worth way more than that, right? So it depends what kind of car falls into that into that price range.